In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, let us acknowledge now our sins, so that we more, may more worthily enter these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out both in word and in deed, that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Saul. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Zip with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Zip. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, do not harm him. For who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, 
Here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though, the Lord delivered you into my grasp. I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord's compassion is on those who A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly. The second man, from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. 
Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. says the Lord, love one another as I have loved you. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others if you would, as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and give back the same amount. But rather love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you a good measure. Packed together, shaken down, and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Well, friends, good morning. Fortunately, next week, uh, the uh, requirement to wear masks uh, during Mass for the, the priests and deacons and other uh, ministers uh, helping out at the liturgy will be lifted, so we'll be liberated from the masks. But for now, you have to you know, listen to me through this. So if anything comes out wrong or lands poorly, it's because of the mask. It's not my fault. <clears throat> It's not the pen, it's not me that's wrong, it's the pen that misspelled the word. But anyway, you know, this gospel passage confronts us with some difficult, uh, some difficult things. It invites us, not really invites us or even calls us, but it demands us to love our neighbor. But not just our neighbor, but also our enemy. Not to love those who love us only, but even those who hate us, who persecute us who mistreat us. It seems virtually impossible. Sometimes it's hard enough to love the people we love, right? Let alone those people who give us a hard time in one way or another. And yet I don't think any of this is possible strictly on our own. You see, God commands this of us, but he doesn't just say, here's a task I want you to live out, now good luck. 
He gives us the grace, the help, the strength that we need to do it. Sometimes we fail in these ways and in other ways, and that's why his mercy is so abundant. Our refrain from the responsorial psalm, the Lord is kind and merciful, and thankfully so, because we need that kindness and we need that mercy all through our lives. Because sometimes we do these things well and other times we just don't. And yet the Lord remains kind and he's always merciful. But he gives us the grace that we need to do what he calls us to do, whether it's with this gospel passage in particular, demands of us, or the rest of the Christian life. Because some of the do's and don'ts that we encounter in the Catholic Church aren't easy to live by aren't easy to abide by. And yet God demands them of us. And so they have to be possible. They have to be possible because an unjust or a just God would not require something of us that we just could not do. He would never lay a yoke upon our shoulders that was too heavy to bear. He would never give a commandment that just wasn't possible to carry out. And so you and I today, whatever it is, these particular things in this gospel passage, or the do's and don'ts, the rules of the church, I think we have to look beyond the rules and trust first and love first the rule giver who is Jesus Christ. And trust that he will give us the grace, the strength, the help that we need to follow the rules. If we start with the rules, they can seem arbitrary and difficult and we push back against them. But if we first start with the rule giver who is our Lord Jesus Christ and see that the church is only carrying out what he asks, then we can really trust in those rules and trust in the grace that he gives us to live them. It's what the Christian life is all about. It's not an easy road, but it's a road that we never walk alone. Stand with me now as we pray. I believe <clears throat> one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Let us turn now to Christ, the source of hope for all who know his name. <clears throat> for the church throughout the world, may God bestow unity among all her peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, May the Lord assist them in working to promote peace among all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer from the effects of violent conflict in their communities, may God protect and comfort them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our parish family of Holy Spirit, May we, may we hear God's call to be good stewards of his gifts of time, talent, and treasure by sharing them freely with a joyful heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our catechists and religious teachers, that they might be led by the Holy Spirit as they pass on the Catholic faith to their students. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our participation in the mission of Christ, that through our synodal journey together, we may grow in our shared responsibility of the mission that is entrusted to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For caregivers and health care providers in this faith community, may they be granted the peace and strength they need to offer comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the beloved dead, especially for the deceased members of our parish, may they find rest and everlasting peace in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us now together pray our parish prayer. Lord Jesus, you told us where your treasure is, there your heart is also. The parish of the Holy Spirit treasures our faith in you, our children, and every person who gathers here. Help us to have the courage to sacrifice, to love, and to build your name. Guide, Guide us by your spirit of wisdom. Give success to the work of our hands. And keep, keep us in your peace. Saints, martyrs, and Mary, our mother, pray, pray for us. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, number 708, Set your heart on the higher gifts, number 708. May brothers and sisters, boys and girls of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, 
but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and in joy we proclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Philomena, Saint Gemma Gilgani, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Union hymn today will be number 930, Haste and See, number 930.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn this morning, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 613.